a missing girl, two suspects, but the answers are still somewhere out there. Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of Sarah Pryor. Reviewer discretion is advised. I'm trying to uh, start giving you guys warnings if these cases are gonna be about kids, and so this case is about a child. Sarah Elizabeth Pryor was born on January 13th, 1976, and she was born in Pennsylvania. Her parents were Barbara and Andrew Pryor, and she was one of three siblings. The three kids were really close. They were basically the best of friends. And by all accounts, this was a very, you know, normal and very happy family. Sarah spent the majority of her life in Pennsylvania, but by 1985 in September, her family would move to the little town of Wayland in Massachusetts. Six, seven weeks after they moved to Wayland, they are actually still trying to get everything moved over. They're still trying to get everything set up in the house. They haven't, you know, fully moved in yet. But Sarah, being a very curious nine-year-old girl, wanted to explore the neighborhood she was going to be living in. And it was the middle of the afternoon and she was gonna go outside and take a little walk around the neighborhood. That was on October 9th, 1985. And when she walked out of that house and down the sidewalk, her family would never see her again. She was seen leaving the house with a pair of headphones on, I guess, listening to music. She was basically just bouncing and happy and she was a happy-go-lucky kid. And she was probably skipping or singing down the road as she walked around the neighborhood. But unfortunately, nobody else really saw her. No one saw exactly what happened. But the reality is, is Sarah never got back to her house. This was considered, I guess, a very quiet neighborhood, a very, not a very busy street, not a lot of traffic. But somewhere along the way, she was kidnapped. Someone had to have taken her. Or something had to have happened to her. Maybe somebody accidentally hit her with their car and then hid her body somewhere. They didn't really know. They report Sarah missing later that evening and they begin a search immediately. The family, the neighborhood, people who live there, uh, friends, and of course the police and volunteers. They have hundreds and hundreds of people combing this entire area. They go door to door in the neighborhood. They're trying to see if anybody saw or heard anything. And unfortunately, nobody did. Whatever happened to her was unseen by anyone. No one even reports hearing like the scream of a, of a young girl or anything like that. And that could mean that perhaps this, whoever did this was able to, cause you know, she's only nine years old. She's a kid, doesn't really know any better. Uh, perhaps, this person said or did something to lure her into his or her, I guess, vehicle. Or this person snuck up behind her without her knowing and maybe, you know, covered her mouth so she couldn't scream. There is just so many unknowns with this situation, with the circumstances of what happened to her. Nobody knows. Despite searching extremely thoroughly and for quite some time, they don't find a single trace of her. They don't find her headphones. They don't find any clothing. They don't find any hair or anything. They find absolutely nothing. And unfortunately, her case, it goes cold. I mean, they're always, it's always there. Like they've, the family especially is always looking and holding out hope and they just are waiting for something, any kind of answer. Well, in 1995, uh, answers would would come, unfortunately. A man was walking his dog in this kind of heavily wooded area, somewhere around the Wayland area. And this is like a couple of miles away from where Sarah and her family were living. Uh, this man and his dog, they find what looks like some kind of bone fragment. So he contacted police. Police uh, take the bone fragment and they're able to determine that this is a bone fragment from a human skull. It would take a few more years after that for DNA technology to advance a little bit further before they were able to extract DNA from this bone fragment and identify who it belonged to. Now, because it was found in Wayland where Sarah had gone missing, that was kind of one of their first thoughts of like, well, bone fragment, maybe it's hers. So let's get some DNA from the family 
and see if we can figure out if this is her. And they do get DNA from the family. They compare it to the DNA they pulled from the bone, and it was a confirmed match. The human skull fragment they found belonged to Sarah Pryor. For a little over 10 years, they were holding out hope that she was out there somewhere, that maybe someone did kidnap her, but maybe were keeping her alive. But their hopes were very quickly dashed when that news came out. By that point, um, unfortunately, when tragedies like this happen, it really does take a toll on the family as a whole. People are reacting to these these things in different ways. Even though for that first 10 years they didn't know she was dead or not, it still put a humongous strain on the family and her parents had divorced by the time she her bone fragment was found. But in 1998, once it was confirmed it was hers, they all kind of, and they buried Sarah as, you know, they didn't really have the rest of her, but they knew she was gone. And so they were able to put a part of her to rest. The funeral service was held on January 13th. That would have been Sarah's 22nd birthday. Initially during the missing person search, the police were trying to find out who may have lived in the neighborhood. Maybe they had priors, maybe they had, you know, convictions in the past, something related to abductions, anything involving crimes against children. So they found out that there was a man named John Huerty, who I cannot find his photo anywhere. I've been looking forever and maybe I'm just dumb. I don't know, but I cannot find it. So this particular man, uh, he was at one point living in Dallas, Texas, and he kidnapped, sexually assaulted, and murdered a 15-year-old girl named Rosemarie Martin. He would only serve 17 years in prison for this brutal crime, and he was paroled in 1984. And it turns out at that point, when Sarah goes missing, he is actually in the area near Wayland, Massachusetts. There would even be witnesses who literally saw him in the general area around that day that she was initially taken. When they would question him about it, he denied having any involvement in this at all. But even though he had a history of abducting younger girls, because he also had, he had a prior uh, conviction or accusation at least about doing something similar, not murdering, but, you know, kidnapping and sexually assaulting a 12 year old girl. So it was kind of in that wheelhouse of what he was known for. But despite that, that's only circumstantial. That's not even, that's not physical evidence, which they had none of. They found no physical evidence or anything that they could put on him to say that he did this to Sarah Pryor. And so unfortunately, they kind of just let him go and they didn't arrest him. Now, Sarah's parents were pretty firmly believed that this was the guy, that this was the man who killed their daughter. Well, in 1986, John Horty is arrested and charged with another murder uh, back in Texas. And he was convicted and he was sentenced to a, I'm not sure exactly how long, but he was, there was a possibility of him getting paroled at some point again. And then once they had a con confirmation that Sarah was gone, Sarah's parents would go to John Wardy's parole hearing because they wanted to make sure that he was never paroled because they did firmly believe that he was the one responsible, despite never being charged with it or anything like that. Another suspect also came up on their radar, and this was a man named Haddon Clark. He is a terrifying looking man. Haddon Clark, uh, his parents had at one point resided in Wayland, Massachusetts. By the time police really kind of find out about Haddon Clark, we're are able to actually find him and question him. He's actually already at that point in prison because he was convicted of murdering two girls, Michelle Dorr and Laura Hodling. So he was out when Sarah was murdered. He hadn't been convicted of any of those crimes at that point. But later on, when police get his name, they do find him in prison. And without really saying anything, they show a picture of Sarah prior to him. And he's like, who is that? I don't, I don't know what it is. It's not one of mine. And again, they had no physical evidence to suggest that he was responsible for this. And so they really couldn't do much about that either. But then in 2000, I guess he did an interview with The New Yorker. And at that point, he did say that 
he one time saw a beautiful young girl in Provincetown. And when he saw her, he went into one of his episodes. And at that point, he did openly confess to the murder of Sarah Pryor. He's now claiming that he was driving his car around that area when he saw Sarah walking on her own and he abducted her. He said he did lure her into his car. He then says he removed her head from her body and he put her body in a trash bag and buried it. And then he put her head in an area that was actually the area where that bone fragment was found. But that's also information that at that point would have already been public knowledge, meaning he could have seen that in a newspaper or saw it on the news, because this is a couple of years after her body or her skull fragment was found. And again, they didn't have any evidence. They didn't have anything uh, other than just what he's saying. But they can't believe that as being actually factual, just based on the fact that it would have been really easy for him to find out that information. And this guy is basically a psychopath and he probably gets off on this kind of thing, confessing to, I mean, a lot of people do that. A lot of these murderers do that. They confess to kill murders they didn't even commit just because they like fucking with the family of, of the victim. But he said, I can prove it. And he said, I will take you to Massachusetts where I buried her body. And this was on a property that his parents owned. Police go there, they dig up everything that he's, like all the areas he says she, she would be, they didn't find her, not even, not even the trash bag. They did find some jewelry, but that didn't link to Sarah, but they dug and dug and excavated and they didn't find a single trace of Sarah at all. And so this was probably just a case of he wanted to get out for a little while and so let me just fuck with these people some more. And at that point, they kind of just dismissed them altogether. But John Horty was still their kind of their top suspect. He was, at least in the family's eyes, for sure, like, this is the guy. He has to be the guy. And we don't want him to get out of prison. Uh, he wasn't released from prison, but he did die in prison of natural causes. Which means that if John was Sarah's abductor and killer, whatever information he had is now gone with him. If he was truly the man who did this, they will never know for sure. He didn't leave behind any notes, any confessions. He didn't tell anybody anything. It's just, it's gone now. With only having that bone fragment and no other physical evidence ever found, sadly, this is one of those cases that, unfortunately, will probably never be solved. If the killer was John Wordy. That being said, he may not be the guy either. There may be a completely different person out there who did commit this crime and is still possibly out there roaming the world. Maybe he's killed more people or maybe he's in prison or whatever the case may be, but he might still be out there if it wasn't John or this other dude. And so there is a possibility that somewhere someone out there might know the truth. You might have information and, and maybe it was John and maybe he did tell you and you just don't want to, you didn't want to say anything because you were afraid. Anything, like if you know anything about this case, you can always report your information anonymously. You do not have to say who you are. You just have to say what you know. Because if there is still a chance that Sarah Pryor and her family can get justice, you need to make sure that you can make that happen. So if you have information about the murder of Sarah Pryor, please contact the Wayland Police at 508-358-4721. If you have anything, anything at all, please help Sarah and her family get the justice she rightfully deserves. But that is it for this case, True Crime, a Rooney Dooney Dingleberry Dongs. I hope you found it interesting. As usual, if you are new here, hello, my name is Mike. I tell true crime stories here on YouTube and sometimes I guess spooky stories. Uh, so please subscribe if you're into that kind of thing. Give this video a like so more people can see it. The more people that see it, the right eyes might land on it and you never know that person might have information to help this family. You never know. Don't tell me, tell the police. <laughs> I also have uh, a TikTok pages over on TikTok, obviously. Uh, so feel free to follow those if you want to. The links to both my TikTok pages are in the link tree in the description of the video below. I do also wanted to say again, I said in my video yesterday, but just in case, uh, I no longer have a merch store. I decided to just do away with it. Uh, I just really wasn't doing a whole lot. So it was like, eh, no point in making Adam 
uh, do, do, you know, work for this and all that <laughs> so that he doesn't have to keep making the stuff if no one's really buying it. But uh, yeah, um, but lastly, if there's a case that you want me to cover, just send me a really quick email. My email is listed below. Uh, all I need to know is the name of the case or the individual, where it happened and when it happened, and I'll add it to my list. If you have recommendations for like spooky stories like haunted houses or anything like that, aliens, anything, you can also send me, send me that information as well. Um, but yeah, that is it for this video today because it's today, right? Yep, yeah, it's today for you and today for me. Eh? No, shut up, Mike. Okay. Anyway, we will see you for the next one. So ta-ta for now. True crime, Arunish. Yeah, yeah. No.